said. Now his name is what? John. John. Puss. Uh, H U. S S. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm here. All right. Look what a year he's born. John Huss. Okay, uh, let me see. I have to let's see. Uh, I, I guess I can go to Wikipedia about him mm-hmm. real quick. Give me a little outline of the man. Uh, okay, so it's saying from 1372 to July 1415. Okay. The Reformation was uh 1519, right? Uh, yeah, roughly around that time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sir. All right. Look what he look what it says. Okay. Sometimes anticipated John Huss or John Huss or referred to as historical text. A Johannes Huss or Johannes Huss was a Czech uh, theologian. That's, I think it's Czechoslovakia. A theologian philosopher who became a church reformer and inspiration of the Hussellants, a key predecessor to Protestantism. Do you see that? What? He was before Protestantism. He was a predecessor to Protestantism? Yes. These people were believers in the Reformed theology before it ever became a thing. So to say that the Protestants come out of the Catholic Church, they Mm -hmm. don't know what they're talking about. The Protestants were always believers. They were always believers in the church. And look, right. he was. And, and look, so you go to the next name right up, right up under there. Okay, I was John just high- Wycliffe. Okay, John Wycliffe. Okay, mm-hmm. yes, I'm familiar with him. Was an English what, scholastic what, philosopher. What year was he born? Uh, let me see. Um. It looks like he was around in the 14th century. It's not giving me any dates unless I click on him. Do you want yeah, me to click, click on, on him? Yeah, click on his that name. Okay, so he's from 1331 to 1384. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So he's a reformer, Catholic priest, a seminar professor. So wait a minute. He is a predecessor to Protestantism. So wait a minute. So you're telling me that these people actually believe what we believe now before they reformed? Wow, bro. Go back, go back to the, uh, go back, uh, go back to the go other guy to, uh, and then click on okay. that other name. Okay, so we got White Clef, uh, we got John Huss, Huss we got White John uh, White Clef, and then we got Marcian Sana. Yep. Click on him. Mm-hmm, to what you're here for. Okay, so he is 85 to 160 AD. Mm-hmm. Bro, that's first century. Mm-hmm. Now go back. These people, what? these people, these people were always part of the church. So I don't know about that one. That was the uh, Okay. okay, it's okay. Never mind. But look, these people see Martin Luther. See, read what it says. It says he came. Okay, hold on. Let me go back down to Martin Luther. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, right here right. it says, right here, uh, Bahamian religious denomination. A century later, on Martin Luther, Huss was a master dean in a, uh oh. Okay. I can't read. Uh, it's, okay. I'm sorry. okay. And a rector of Charles University of Prey. John Huss was born in. Bohemia to poor parents and escape from poverty. Hush trained in the priesthood in the early age. See, these people, these people were before the Reformation. So they people that have always been in the church that believe the way we believe. There's never was a time that the people that didn't believe what we believe. You could go all through the Fox Books of Martyrs and find each name. These people believe what we believed. Amen. And I, even uh, was it uh, William Tyndale? William Tyndale goes back further than him. 
Yes, I'm, I'm familiar of William, uh, William, uh, William Tyndale, who, who created the Tyndale Bible. Um, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely just shocked about this dude right here. Um, this Marcion Sanab dude, bro, that's 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 eighty five to one sixty. Mm-hmm. What's that? What eight? What was that? What, what what was that? Let me click on him again, bro. One sixty AD. That's that's that's. He's first century. He's around a, a little bit after. He's around John's time. Mm-hmm. These people believed believed in Protestantism before it ever became. These people died believing what they believed. Oh my God. It was never a time when they wasn't believers. To say that we came out of the so-called Roman Catholic Catholic, Church Roman Catholic Church is, is delusional. Just remember, and I know I know it confuses a lot of people because we live in America. But when you when you were lived in Europe, you were under the Catholic Church. You're you if you lived in England and Great Britain, you were under the Church of God. Why do you think a lot of people came to America to get away from the Church of God? I mean Church of right. England. Right. Right, and I'm then familiar. if you go to go right now to Italy, you can't go to the First Baptist Church of Italy. You have to go to the Orthodox Church. Correct. You, we are privileged to live in America to be able to choose what church we want to go to. The Hebrew Amen. Israelites wouldn't even exist anywhere but America. This is it. Yeah, they wouldn't like exist in Saudi Arabia. Oh, you definitely got that right. They wouldn't exist overseas in uh, in a, in the in the in the North Africa and Egypt, even some West West uh, uh West African, some of them Islam states. They wouldn't exist only because they have freedom to choose what they want to worship here. Mm-hmm. It's the only reason their religion even exists. You're free to choose what which one you want. You come here, you wake up in the morning, you go to Baptist, you go to Methodist, you go to Protestant, I mean, uh, the Presbyterian, you go to the uh, the Pentecostal, you can go to Church of God, you can go to uh, Kojic, you can go to uh, AME, you can go to all these churches because the, you live in America and you have a choice. Right. Right. But to say some of the stupid things that they say, like, oh, well, you know, the Protestant came out of the is just nothing more than a daughter of a, a Roman Catholic. It's just delusion. Oh, well, I have to say, Brother Brian, right now you have literally, and uh, see, it wasn't Marcion a heretic? Uh, no, you think about the other Marcion. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know about that Marcion. I'm not sure about that one. Not, not this Marcion. I'm not sure about that one. I, I'm looking at this Marcion. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Early church fathers such as Justin Martin Arrhenius denounced Marcion as a heretic. And okay, maybe this was uh, the same Marcion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But 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 remember, when the the one we was looking at, that John Husk, John Hus, he be, he he was killed because he didn't follow suit with what the Pope wanted. He didn't believe in uh, he didn't believe in different things. I think it was like he didn't believe the Pope had full authority. And 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 if you're up under as a as a as a theologian or a monk and you're up under the Pope and you you are preaching outside that the Pope has no authority, they mm-hmm. will burn you at the stake. He was burned at the stake for what he believed. Mm-hmm. William Tyndale was burned. At, burned. Yes, a he lot was. of these. A lot. Martin Luther was the only one that wasn't because he was he 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 was allowed to get out, but some of these didn't. Mm. 
Yeah, I, di I didn't know nothing about this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, the Marcion guy, when I read further on him. So he started mm -hmm. out good, and then he tweaked off later on. Um, uh, but this Jan Hus guy, I didn't, uh, John Hus guy, I didn't know anything about him. Mm -hmm. So you just John Hus is a uh, is another is 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 read what happened to him. Read what it says. Uh, they uh after what uh, what happened to him. Okay, all right. So here, yeah, John go, go, Hus. Scroll up, scroll up. He should show his death. Uh, uh -uh, damn, damn, damn. My bad, damn. Okay, so this is when he was born. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Go on. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. When he, okay, so let me get some context here. All right. So I'll start here. The church authorities against Huss and his disciples, he issued a papel bull. Uh, that uh, excommunicated Huss. However, it was not enforced and Huss continued to preach. Huss then spoke out against Alexander V, successor of anti-pope uh, anti John uh, XXIII uh, for his selling of the indulgence. Huss excommunication was then enforced and he spent the next two years living in exile. Kind of like... Um, Athanasius and Ambrios that happened to them. Uh, not Athanasius, but uh, Ambrios. Uh, well, yeah, actually, Athanasius too. Yeah, okay. So when the Council of Constance assembled, Huss was asked to be there and present his view on the dissension within the church. When he arrived, he was immediately arrested and put in prison. He was eventually taken in front of the council and asked to recant his view. He replied, I will not for a, chap uh, for a chapel of gold retreat from the truth. When he refused, he was put back in prison on July 6, uh, 1415. He was burned at the stake for heresy against the doctrine of the Catholic Church. He could be heard singing psalms as he was burning among his dying words. Huss pre, uh, predicted that God would rise, uh, uh, raise others who calls for reform would not be suppressed. This was later taken as a prophecy by Martin Luther, born 68 years after Huss's death. After Huss was executed, the followers of his religious teachings, known as the Hussites, refused to elect another Catholic monarch and defeated five consecutive papal crusades between 1420 and 1431. In, this, in what became known as the Husset War, both the Bohemian and the Mar Moravian population remained majority Hussite until the 1620s, when a Protestant defeated the Battle of the White Mountain, resulted into the lands of the Bohemian Crown coming under Hasseburg Dominion oh, for the next 300 years and began subjected to immediate forced conversions in intense campaign of the return to Catholicism. Wow. Okay. All right, Brother Brian, I read it. Mm hmm. So you want to say, and he was a reformer before they were a reformer. Wow. So wow. The, so I, they were always true believers in Christ, even though they might have been under the Catholic Church. Yes, sir. And you just proved that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, again, uh, family, just a little snippet here in church history. Um, <laughs> Brother Brian said that they don't read church history, which they don't, talking about these occults or they have a distorted view of church history uh, with a lot of gaps. Uh, listen, I, I, my position on these occults, especially Hebrew Israelites, they can't even spell church history. So let alone read church history. Um, so we're dealing with a bunch of ignorant, heretical people um, who uh, take the, they're, they're basically trying to create their own narrative, right? And I think we all have figured that out now, uh, eight years later, or through this journey of eight years that we have been doing this. Oh, okay. um, uh, 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 as you can see, and, and we've been sitting back and we've been, you know, uh, you know, seeing a lot of stuff, hearing a lot of stuff. Um, you can see that these people are getting worse. They're not getting better, 
right? Uh, some people have uh, kicked back and they're observing and they don't like what they see. Um, and saying, and I have gotten emails, Brother Brian, requesting when y'all going to speak, when y'all going to talk, when y'all going to teach, when y'all going to bring some more truth, where can I go? Um, listen, we haven't gone anywhere. Right. And we're we're still on the, the on the trucking line of bringing forth more information to you all so that you can be fully equipped. Uh, listen, family, tonight uh, we're going to be definitely dealing with. Hold on. Give me one second. Oh, you got another one. Even Peter. even goes back further than that. Stop playing. Stop playing yeah, all the way back to 1000 A.D. No, are you kidding me? <laughs> Let me type his name in real quick. Uh, okay. 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 I hope I spelled his name correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 1140 AD to tw uh, 1205 AD uh, was the leader of the Wesedensian, the ch uh, Christian spiritual movement of the Middle Ages. Uh, the traditional that his first name was Peter and can only be traced back to the 14th century. Uh, this uh, this has caused some historians such a Jan uh, Solomon uh, to seek likely a later invention. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm just scrolling through his his information here. This is, you know, this is Wikipedia. This is a nice little outline on some of these people. And you should look some of these people up and, and see what they did, what time, what what part do they play and what, what timeline do they fall in. Um, these are the gaps here that, 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 of course, occultic members are not going to fill in for you. They're not interested in trying to fill that in. Mm -hmm. they are, as you can see today, and I'll say I'll speak briefly on it. Um, and I was sent uh, and to those who sent me various clips. I want to thank you all so much for sending me those clips. I do have them. Um, and I looked at it and I will speak on it on briefly. Uh, what's going on, with, as you can hear from the examples of, of, of what took place today and yesterday, the evidence is overwhelming that you're dealing with a bunch of uneducated people who li literally don't seek to be educated and don't want to know. These people want to create their own narrative. You can clearly see this on Nabel TV and they are and they're comfortable with it. Right. They're comfortable within the lie. Um, I have chosen. Right. I have chosen to go back to ground zero, beginning with God. Right. And I told Brother Brian this, I, him and I talked about this briefly. I said, I want to take them back and let's start with God, because, again, we can talk about salvation, grace, mercy, faith and all of that. Right. And some of them can even get explain it correctly. But here's the pro here's the problem. Even if they explain it correctly, and I'll tell you briefly what happened uh, in Clubhouse a couple of days ago. I had a conversation with a gentleman named Santino who was on Naval TV's um, you know show before, um, and he articulated Brother Brian the gospel to the T, one hundred percent correctly. However, I did something that caused people to look at me sideways and funny for a second. I told him, literally, I said, you know what? That was a beautiful explanation look, look, and a correct yeah. explanation of what you gave of the gospel. I told him, but unfortunately, I will have to reject your explanation of the gospel. And here's why I rejected Brother Brian. It's because they got God wrong. See, you can have a heretic explain all the other essentials correctly, right? And even give you the right name, right? But here's the thing that goes back to our last conversation that we had, like for instance, with T.D. Jakes. I'm sure that T.D. Jakes, Brother Brian, can expound profoundly, exegetically, philosophize, philosophize or theologically on every level or even simple terms, the gospel correctly. However, I will even tell T.D. Jakes to him, his face, I reject your explanation. I reject what you said. The reason why is because T.D. Oh Jakes God. does not worship the same God that we worship. And clearly we showed that the other night when we went to his website. 
three manifestations of God? Did the Bible says that God only manifested just as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Did it say that he manifested as God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit? No, it did not. It clearly says when you look at 1 Timothy 3.16, God manifested in the flesh. That's what it told you. And unfortunately, one is Pentecostal heretics have literally taken this way too far, Brother Brian. They literally have rolled on this coattail of manifestations and other stuff that they got going on and just taking it to extremes like a normal like you know any other occult would do any regarding whatever subject that you can possibly think of this is this is not uh this is not unheard of right and it's wrong it's completely wrong uh, listen when you start moving out of the guidelines of the biblical text brother brian or and, and to the rest of the body of christ now you're going to interject a whole lot of different problems what you all have seen today and witnessed on Naval TV's uh, uh, platform, why are you shocked, right? When they get, they get salvation wrong, they got God wrong, they got everything else wrong, right? And even some of the things that they could get right, it still will end up wrong. Why? Because the source is incomplete, is the source that, they, that they're writing on is wrong. You can't get Jesus wrong and think that you're going to be right with the Father. You can't sit up here and get everything else correct and think that you're okay and you got God wrong. I don't understand where people have come up with this nice inanity. Thank you, sister, uh, 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 to a sister in Clubhouse who said this, this nice inanity right? We're called Christianity, but Christianity, some people in Christianity has literally interjected this nice inanity, and that comes with, well, we have to uh, overlook stuff, and we have to just play, uh, just, just turn a blind eye to stuff, and, and just to go along and get along. Then you turn around that certain same person that decided to interject the nice inanity in Christianity has the nerve to try to do apologetics and scream out, hey, this is wrong. Hey, your doctrine is off. Hey, this is that. No, 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 sir, please be quiet. Shut your mouth because you're looking like a hypocrite right now. You can't link arms with heretics and then think that they're going to allow you to correct them. It don't work that way. It, it, it just does not work that way, right? Because now you're in, you're putting your loyalties in, is split in between and now you're straddling the fence. I would go further, but I'm going to be quiet for right now, right? Some things I will, you're going to hear me say that in some spots here and there in this hangout that I'm going to refrain from going further deep into until a later time. So please, I will ask you, body of Christ, please be patient with us, right? We're just talking to you right now. We're just talking to you right now so you can get comfortable and all of that good stuff before we go deeper into the lesson. But again, what Brother Brian just showed here profoundly, that there are believers and quite a bit of believers that believed just like how you believe and how we believe, right? And it's and notice something. I bet you any kind of money, if Brother Brian goes further and deeper on this road, you'll find that it streams straight down what right all the way back to the biblical text, of course, or straight down the heart line of the church. Right? All this other messiness that you see later on, further on down, that's later on mess, right? With these other denominations, if as you want to say, quote unquote. Right. And then, of course, you got the 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 cults that have been trying to penetrate the church for thousands of years, running its thread right neck and neck with the church. The generational line trying to say that they are right and they're correct and they worship a whole different God. I'm just I've just got questions there. Right. Me and Brother Brian got questions there. So we're digging. Right. And we're doing the research and we want to bring the stuff before you listen. Mama Millicent, who was so lovely and so wonderfully texted me yesterday. Sister Cherry, you all right? You haven't gone live. What, what's going on? I said, I'm doing just fine. 
Sister Cherry is doing some research. Brother Brian is doing some research. And not to mention, we've been on our knees in prayer. I know I have. Right? I, I don't want to come to you with half-cocked information. Brother Brian doesn't want to come to you with half-cocked information, you know, like the one that's Pentecostals tell you to shut the da 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 and don't even know what you're shut da 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 about, right? And don't get me wrong, I got some charismatic in me too, but again, we got some people that's just, mm, shut up, Cherry, watch your mouth. Brother Brian, <laughs> control this mouth of mine. Pray for me, sir. Because I can say something. <laughs> as, the, as the scriptures tells us this year, and that's what our authority is anyway, scriptures. There's a mm -hmm. time and place for everything. Yes, sir. And sometimes it ain't that time. So, but right now we have to, instead of talking about teaching people over there on Naval TV, we are teaching people how to handle this stuff. We ain't talking about it. We are doing it. Amen. And I you feel are. like we the one of the few that do it. There are some more out there, but we one of the few that does teach us on how to deal with the Hebrew life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And, and we can see clearly what, the, what I want to deal with their concept of what they believe about God. Right. A lot of them are literally saying that God said that ye are gods. They really think that they are God. Where do you think that spirit comes from, fam? Literally abusing Psalms 82 to no end. Literally abusing what Jesus said in John chapter 10 to no end. These people seek to be God and even to replace God. My question to you all respectfully, when y'all going to get it, right? Some Christians over the past few weeks have proven that they just don't get it. So they got to ride that coattail. They got to ride that journey. They got to bump their head, slap their face, cut their face against Bob Breyer before they actually, you know what? Maybe this wasn't the best thing to do, right? And I'm not saying it's too late for them. Right? I'm not saying that. The best thing that they can do is fall prostrate before the Lord and, and beg his part. Right? Some Christians that I have spoken to and, and, and throw me in the basket and probably throw Brother Brian in the basket, we forgive you. But again, you cut off. We learned our lesson too. When God warns you about Judas's and warns you about backstabbers and backbiters, uh, leave them alone and believe them for what they really are. We learning too, right? On the opposite end. So everybody is learning in their own, own process, right? I, I get it.